Hi folks, this is a ring gear from a rear differential. What's interesting about this is it's mid 50s Rockwell C, so it's really hard. We had a customer reach out with a Tormach 1100 trying to machine pockets into this stuff. So we're gonna walk through how we succeeded and some lessons that we learned on how to machine this with a regular carbide end mill on your Tormach. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. So we've actually done some hard milling videos before, and there's a couple different schools of thoughts on either really low feed per tooth or really low radial engagement. Either way, it's a process that when you get dialed in is really cool because hardened steel actually cuts really well. And Jeffrey, who's now started full time working on proven cut speeds and feeds and tooling research. Um, Jeffrey went to town working on this using a regular four flute, happens to be a Lakeshore carbide end mill. Uh, there are specialty tools that have different grinds and even different coatings that are really good for hard milling. And I wouldn't discourage anyone from using them, but what I wanted here was a regular run of the mill carbide end mill, relatively inexpensive and much more likely something that you're going to have around the shop. The first thing you'll notice is we took a piece of scrap aluminum and we turned it into a custom fixture, mounting it on our fixture plate. If you're gonna do this, you want a rigid, accurate, repeatable work holding setup. Don't skimp here and pay the price down the road when you're breaking tools. Some creative use of a machinist square and dowel pins on the fixture plate makes it easy to locate this and align it up and then using our Heimer to find zero. Starting off with the ramp into the pocket, we are going pretty slow, 800 RPMs at a ramp feed rate of 2.5 inches per minute. And now it can sometimes be confusing which feed rate is Fusion actually using. We've got the cutting, the lead ins, the ramps, the plunge. But if we go into the simulation and change over to the info tab, you get some really good information here uh, that shows us right now we are doing a ramp feed rate, which is the 2.52 inches per minute. But it's also the settings on this last tab, the linking tab, that really matter. The ramping angle, the ramp taper angle, the clearance height, and the helical ramp diameter. The ramping angle, two degrees, is what drives the pitch of that red ramp helix there. So for comparison, moving to a four degree ramp angle is twice as steep. Benefit is it's much quicker. Downside is many cutting tools have limitations on the face grind of the tool on how steep a ramping angle they can tolerate, which is also dependent on the material that you're cutting and chip evacuation. Ramp taper angle is an awesome feature. We've got it set at zero degrees here. Look what happens when you use a six degree ramp taper angle. By tapering our ramp pocket, you're really helping those chips evacuate and you're also giving it more area for the coolant or air blast to get in there, especially when you're doing deeper pockets that are deeper than say one or two times your cutter's diameter. If you've ever broken a tool, it may well have been because the chips that were just caught weren't able to get blown out or removed from that pocket and you end up recutting them. And when you recut them, you're massively increasing the load on the cutting edge of the tool, maybe also on the horsepower of the machines. And you may also be inducing chatter or vibration in that carbide, which doesn't like surprises like that. Ramp clearance height is the height plane at which it starts the ramp. Be careful. I believe the default is often 0.1 inches, which is far too high in my opinion, because ramping is often a slower operation and I don't want to spend all that time cutting air. So we set ours to the 10 thou value above the top height. And then helical ramp diameter. This is the diameter of those red circles. It's not a coincidence that it's that 0.2375. You right click and choose edit expression, you'll see a conditional formula, but it's basically trying to get it to be 95% of the tool's diameter. We've got that 0.2375, which is that 90% diameter, and we take our quarter inch end mill and we show what happens. When that end mill walks around that diameter, what you can see is that the biggest path the tool can take while still cutting the center of our part out. If you noticed, when we were doing the six degree ramp taper angle, we had a problem. We were leaving a small post at the center of our part. This post actually gets machined away as you ramp down. We've never had it be an issue. If you have, let us know in the comments below. I'd be curious to hear. The other thing that's really important to note about the helical ramp diameter is it's the most common cause for getting an adaptive toolpath that just doesn't calculate. I just programmed a 2D adaptive to machine this pocket, but this time I used a 3 8 diameter end mill. Measuring this pocket is 0.637, so almost two times the diameter of the end mill. So you would think that that adaptive should work, but we get this warning, empty tool pad, it just can't calculate it. And the first thing we always recommend is check your helical ramp diameter. Make it something really small, 0.05 inches. 
and see if that fixes your problem. Sure enough, it does. We can make it a little bit wider, but honestly not too much because you can't have a 2D adaptive toolpath that's gonna to crash into the sidewall of your part as it's ramping in. As Jeffrey was working up this recipe, we had a lot of speeds and fees that didn't work. We heard a lot of chatter and it's a good time to reinforce. Chatter is never okay. In our years of learning and experimenting with machining, it's always better to take a step back and find a recipe that works, even if it's a little slower than you like or not ideal, and build up from that point. And so now that we've transitioned into our actual adaptive cut, we're running at 40 surface feet per minute and 1.3 thousandths of an inch feed per tooth or about 3.2 inches per minute with a 0.02 inch optimal load. Optimal load is basically the same thing as width of cut. And in this case, the 0.02 is an 8% radial engagement. So a very light cut. Nevertheless, you can still see we are forming a proper chip and the cut sounds good. We've got that tool choked up as much as we can. On most materials, any cut that's up to two times diameter isn't a big deal or noteworthy. Anything above four times depth can be really tricky. Here, we're only at two and a half times, but it's a difficult material that can be more prone to chatter. So we were really happy with how this recipe worked. There was also a really important balance that we had to reach in this recipe, which is tool stick out and chip evacuation. You want to keep the tool choked up in the holder as much as possible to increase its rigidity. However, doing so, especially on a relatively deep feature like this, makes it harder to evacuate the chips. And while rigidity is important, so is chip evacuation because you cannot let the end mill recut them. At best, it will just mar your surface finish, but at worst, it will chip the cutting fluids of the end mill or possibly even snap it or cause a myriad of other problems. If you're using a fog buster system like this, you wanna make sure it's aimed really well and consider turning up the air pressure to help aid in that chip evacuation. Or similarly with flood coolant, you wanna make sure that the flood coolant is blowing the chips out of there, not creating a swimming pool for them to hang out in. Hope you folks learned something, hope you enjoyed. We've got all the information for this recipe in the video description, but if you're interested in more stuff like this, please check out provencut.com. We also have a new machining newsletter that's called Chip Rag, which covers not only stuff that we've got going on, but also other news that's happening in the CNC machining and manufacturing world. So be sure to subscribe to that monthly newsletter. Otherwise folks, take care, see you soon.